I was talking to Johnny Ive briefly years ago. It was in the hands-on area following a big event where Apple had just released a bushel of new products. And the person next to me mentioned how they all looked really good, really great. And Johnny got this deeply pensive look in his eyes. And he said, did they? He didn't know. He wouldn't know, couldn't know until customers got their hands on them and showed Apple what the products really were. It was, hold that thought. Apple has just launched a brand new machine with a 27 inch IPS P3 5K display. But instead of wrapping it around an M1 or M1 Pro running Mac OS Monterey, they wrapped it in an A13 running iOS 15, a bit, and paired it with the new Studio Mac, the first new Mac in almost a decade. Hold that thought too. At that exact same time, Apple killed the 27 inch Intel iMac, but not like last year when they killed the 21.5 inch Intel iMac after replacing it with a sleek new M1 model. No, this one, they didn't replace at all. They killed it just to watch it die. Hold that, no, that's three. Juggle those thoughts just one more minute because reports on whether or not Apple is ever gonna replace the bigger pro or iMac have been just all over the place for the last couple of weeks from it's coming soon to it's coming later to it's not coming like at all ever, RIP, DED. With some pointing to the 27 inch being discontinued and the Mac Pro being specifically, deliberately singled out with just one more product to go, Mac Pro. Proves that it's dead. While others are pointing at the exact same thing, but saying killing the Intel box is how Apple will drive people to the Mac studio, for now at least, and that the iMac has already moved to Apple Silicon. So we're not waiting on that so much as we're waiting on more of that. But what if, what if they're all wrong? What if it's not really that complicated at all? And the various products and reports that we're seeing aren't actually in conflict. It's just, it just comes down to understanding Apple as a culture, not a company, to understanding that, yes. But what I do, that defines me. Apple doesn't usually kill off existing product lines, not when there are new versions on deck. They are almost shameless in how they keep a Mac mini or Mac Pro on the market, on the shelf, long, long after the expiry date, if something like a 2018 or 2019 rebirth is in the works. But by contrast, when Apple does MDK an existing product line, it's usually because they wanna get out of that business entirely, like Xserve or the airport routers, or because they wanna quickly, cleanly move customers towards a replacement product, like the HomePod to HomePod mini, and now maybe the 27 inch iMac to the Mac Studio with a 27 inch studio display. And hit subscribe to get my in-depth reviews on both of those. In October of last year, Ross Young of Display Supply Chain Consultants reported on a 27 inch mini LED display coming from Apple in the first quarter of 2022. Now, basically. But he quickly revised that to a 27 inch mini LED iMac for the same time frame. Again, now-ish. By January of this year though, he revised the timeline to June when Apple typically holds their worldwide developer conference, WWDC. Then, following Apple's March 8 event and the launch of Mac Studio and the Studio Display, he revised it yet again, this time back to a 27 inch mini LED display and not a 27 inch iMac. So let's just add Ross to the Deadpool list for a minute. Not that Deadpool, 9 to 5 Mac 2, because Felipe Esposito, who did a lot of the early coverage of the Mac Studio and Studio Display, has since reported that Apple has no plan, no plans for a new high-end iMac anytime in the near future, meaning no 27 inch model and no M1 Pro or M1 Max model. So to nothing, at least until Mark Gurman of Bloomberg hits the court, because he's been reporting on an updated 27 inch or larger Apple Silicon iMac for over a year now, initially alongside what quickly became the 24 inch M1 model. And he's still holding to hope. He's still expecting an iMac Pro, but not for this year anymore. In other words, it isn't shipping soon, but at the same time, he just can't believe anyone isn't expecting it anymore either. So that's one for the non-Deadpool, the life pool, and make it two, because supply chain exfiltrator Guo Mingqi is now predicting a new iMac Pro for 2023 as well. And that makes it two to two, Schrodinger's iMac, but culture, not company. Why, not what? So way back machine. Maybe Apple starts planning the Mac's transition from Intel to custom silicon. All the ultra low power models up first. 
MacBook Air, Pro, Mac Mini, then iMac, the small iMac, all with M1, done, shipped. Then wave two, the big kid MacBook Pros with M1 Pro and M1 Max, but also the higher end Mac Mini and iMac, get them prototyped up, ready to go. But then they stop. They just stop because their customers want them, but it's also the only thing their customers could possibly want because it's the only thing they know. It's that old Ford line about never making the car because all their customers ever wanted was faster horses. It's literally the faster horses. So Apple decides to hold those horses and they start to think, what's the actual product mix between Mac mini and pro, between iMac and iMac pro? How much of that is already covered by the M1 Mac mini and M1 iMac? And how much is still left for a Mac mini and an iMac pro? And how much of that could be filled by a Mac mini and iMac pro that were kind of one and the same, not an all in none or an all in one, but a new modular system where you could choose between two levels of compute boxes and two levels of displays or just get your own display. And yeah, modular, but not like how Apple used the term before, the way they described the 2019 non-trash can Mac Pro. And it provides a foundation for modularity and flexibility. They'd have to change that messaging to expandable or whatever, because that's gonna be its main differentiator now expandability, but these are the spiritual successors of the trash can, what the trash cans were meant to be. Trash can, trash box, the space gray. And what if they put M1 Pro and M1 Max into those boxes? No, scratch that, M1 Max and M1 Ultra. And that way they weren't offering essentially the same systems in parts and in whole. And when rarely new display tech came out, you wouldn't have to upgrade your whole entire Mac just to get it. And when you Apple Silicon was ready, you wouldn't have to swap out a perfectly usable display anymore either just to get it. But what about the Mac Mini Pro and iMac Pro that are already in the pipeline? And what about them? They're prototyped, they're not going anywhere. They can abide and Apple can test the market with Mac Studio and Studio Display. Let customers, let us get their hands on them and see what they really are. Tell Apple what they really are. The M2 Mac mini and 24 inch M2 iMac are already on their way and they'll have slightly better single core perf if nowhere nearly the massive multiple cores. So if customers show Apple that we love the Mac studio and the studio display and demand for a Mac mini pro and or iMac pro plummet, then fine, great. This is then the new normal. As far as lineups go, rest in pieces iMac, two new pieces. But if there still ends up being a Mac mini pro or iMac Pro sized hole in the market, or both, then also fine, they're prototype. They can just as easily be moved into full on production and then let the best Macs win. Because end of the day, Apple really truly does not care one bit about cannibalizing their own products. They just don't want anyone else to do it. So if Mac Studio eats Mac Mini Pro or iMac Pro right out of existence, so be it. But if the Mac Mini Pro or iMac Pro fights back, and wins, or better yet, grows the market at Windows expense, Apple wins, like the house, Apple always wins, which is why Schrodinger's iMac Pro isn't really alive or dead, not yet, not at all. The box simply hasn't been opened yet. It's literally an Apple product limbo, waiting to see how well or how poorly the Mac Studio and Studio Display sell. Maybe the next round of M2 minis and iMacs as well. On what we show Apple these new products really are, really mean to us, and how much those of us who still really truly want a new Apple Silicon iMac Pro, or at least still think we do, how much noise we make for it in the meantime, how much demand for it Apple can forecast. Because that's what really moves product, a gut feeling, a strong opinion loosely held, but also stats, analytics, and I'm guessing algorithms, neural networks, and machine learning at this point. Everything you can start learning right now with today's sponsor, Brilliant, everything the next generation of everything from silicon to software to analytics is gonna be built on, but also logic and science and computer science, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, and so much more. Because Brilliant is the online interactive STEM learning platform with a growing catalog of courses specifically crafted to help you learn concepts by working through them yourself in a visual hands-on way and all the lessons are thoughtfully broken up into bite-sized pieces so you can learn at your own pace, zero pressure. Like, have you ever really wanted to learn to code, but you were put off by the overly complicated traditional computer programming courses? Well, 
Brilliant has actual fun interactive challenges that let you shift blocks of pseudocode around, receive immediate feedback and get results. You feel like you're solving puzzles, gaming even, but the whole entire time you're learning how algorithms work. And once you know that, coding becomes way less intimidating and way more accessible and engaging. Because here's the thing, here's the secret. Everyone starts somewhere and you can get started right now, today, for free, just by visiting brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie or clicking on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Just click the button on the screen or go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so it's hitting up this playlist for way more, all the details on the Mac Studio and everything else coming next. So hit up the playlist and I'll see you in the next video.